All right, a very good day to everyone in YouTube land. And it's been a while since I uploaded a new YouTube video on my channel. But I'm happy to do this one because this one is actually uh, going to help my students, especially the beginner students who are having some problem with the left hand grip. So this video is to explain uh, the basics of grip as applied to match grip. All right, I'm not going to be talking about traditional grip in this video. I'll do that in a, another video. And trying to understand that the reasons for the left hand being weak is because there's a lot of rigidity, especially in the fingers. You know, it's rigid. That's why the, the hand is weak. All right. Not because the left hand is not as strong as the right hand. I mean, of course, uh, if you're left hand dominant, then it will work the other way around. That's common sense, okay? Uh, most of my students are right-handed, so I'm going to be using the uh, right hand perspective, the right hand dominant perspective rather. But if you are left hand, left-handed like I am, um, just reverse whatever I say. Uh, the other way around. Okay, so let's talk about the basics of the grip, match grip. So what I'll do, and this uh, got this idea from Tommy Igo, which is really smart. You've got five digits right in your hand. So let's number them from the thumb: one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to take the first two digits of my left hand. I'm going to hold the stick thusly. Now it's very important to know that you get this formation here because you know you don't want this. I see a lot of students hold the stick like that, or you don't want that because what that does is to make it very difficult for these three digits here to help motivate the stick. So let's say your thumb is here, okay, and your index finger is right down here. You got to understand that there's these digits are connected by, you know, tendons and nerves and whatnot. So when you do that, all your left hand can do, uh, sorry, all the three digits can do in your left hand would be this. So you're relegated to playing mainly from the wrist, which is just a hinge, okay? You're not leveraging on anything, or you end up playing this way from the elbow, all right? <clears throat> if you want a more efficient technique, try this. Okay, so let's go back to the top two fingers. This is your formation, right? Now, you pretty much want to get the fingers lined up, the top two digits lined up such that you can have an imaginary line going across and it will form a cross like this. Pretty much it, okay? That's the ballpark you want to get. Very important is that the pad of your thumb, this area here, is lining up with the stick. Very, very important. Okay, and as Tommy Igo was saying in uh, his Great Hands for a Lifetime DVD, there's some wood showing here. Very, very important. This is your make it or break it. If you don't get this part right, it'll be very hard for the, uh, the rest of your digits to form a proper grip in your left hand. Okay, so once you got that, all right, and I'm assuming you've already found your optimum balance point. You learn to throw the stick with just these two fingers. So I'm going to start from 12 o'clock. And I'm just going to throw it down. Okay. I'm holding with enough pressure to keep the stick from falling. 
that salt. I'm not squeezing the stick because if you squeeze the stick, that's what you get. Okay, you've got no leverage, you've got no rebound, nothing. Okay, so you're going to be doing all the work. And basically, good technique in drumming uh, would mean that you you are actually not doing all of the work. The stick is doing at you know half of the work or even more than that. So there you go. So once you get this form and result looking good, you add only one more finger, the third one. Again, you want to make sure the pad of this finger, the top joint here upwards to the fingertip, rests on the stick or the stick rests on the pad of the finger not too far in you don't want the stick going too far in it's very hard to control the stick that way okay and that usually indicates rigidity and tension you're not relaxed enough relax okay get the stick to rest on the pad of your thumb oh, sorry on the pad of the third finger here Don't do anything else until you get this step correct, okay? Now this finger is very powerful because when you make a stroke, this finger here actually helps to push the stick down as well. So I'm going to show it to you from slow mo, okay? Start from here, you push the stick down, watch this finger. This goes down, this finger pushes the stick down as well at the same time and follows the rebound, follows the rebound. So the rebound is happening as a reaction to you throwing the stick down. You are not picking the stick up, all right? The rebound is the stick's reaction to you throwing the stick down. So you allow that to happen. You don't force the issue. Okay? One more time. Slow motion. Watch this finger. Watch how this finger and the wrist works together. Okay, so now I'm going to make an actual stroke with this triangular formation here. Okay? full rebound stroke. It's going to start here, it's going to come back here. I've got a nice amount of velocity to give the stick enough energy and momentum so that the rebound is equal to the stroke. And this is the step that you want to spend quite a bit of time on, getting this to work. With just these three fingers, you, you're not going to bother with finger number four and finger number five. They're just going to stay out of the way, stay relaxed. You don't have to do anything funny like stuff like this or stuff like that. Just let it dangle there, okay? Away from the stick. So you're just working with these three fingers only. Keep working at it until you get it right. Okay, make sure that the any of the fingers are not coming off of the stick. So for example, like the thumb coming off. Okay, I've got a few students who have this problem. Or you don't want that. You know, the third finger coming off of the stick on the rebound. It stays in contact with the stick. All the fingers stay in contact with the stick. Now, if you want more information about this, you should check out uh, Murray Spivak's video that he did in the early 1990s with Louis Belson. It's actually available on Hudson Music. Just go type in Murray Spivak on the Hudson Music website. Uh, Spivak is spelled as S-P-I-V-A-C-K. Anyway, I'll put a link in the video description. So, 
Murray talks about this, and I found it very, very helpful. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. He's, uh, I think, the only uh, teacher that I know so far in my research that actually talks about what this finger actually does in the action of throwing the stick down. Okay, so you spend quite a bit of time, you've got the hang of it, you're relaxed, okay, the fingers are flexible enough. So when you add these two fingers in, 4 and 5, gives you a bit more power. That's all it does, okay? But you've got this working. That's more than half your battle won already. So now with all the fingers in, and I'm not doing anything funny like stuff like this and stuff like that, no, okay? If your last finger happens to be off the stick, that's okay. Because sometimes, you know, some people's last finger is uh, quite short. Alright? If it's alright with Tommy, I go, it's alright with me. Okay? So let's throw the stick down. So this is pretty much all my fingers on the stick right now. Again, watch how this finger helps to push the stick down. You see, when the stick comes back up, you notice the there's a little bit of space between the butt end of the stick and my wrist. You don't want that. Where's our lining to the center? You don't want that. It's here, okay? Pretty much here. And if, if I go back to the top two fingers now, when the stick moves, your fingers are not moving with the stick. You're not doing that. It's the, your fingers create an axis. Okay? To facilitate the upward downward motion of the stick. Or the vertical motion of the stick. Okay? Now continue him. Okay, now you don't see but I'm making sure that all the strokes land in the center of the pad. So on and so forth. Now the faster you go, the, the, the fingers basically do most of the work. Okay, and because there's that velocity, there's enough energy to create uh, volume as such. Okay, so that's basically it. That's basically it. Alright, so hopefully this helps. And uh, do check out the links that I will append in the video description that will give you more information about what I just covered in this uh, video. And um, yeah, hopefully it helps. And I'll see you in the next video, I guess. Alright, bye.